Now let us look at an interesting bird called the Nicobar pigeon. Remember students, it is called the Nicobar pigeon, but it is not endemic to just the Nicobar island. It is found in fact across the Southeast Asian region, in fact up till Solomon Islands and Palau. So it is a native bird to the Nicobar Island, but not an endemic bird. And as we all know, Nicobar Island is already a biosphere reserve. It is already a biosphere reserve because of its rich and unique biodiversity. We already are aware that there are two national parks in the Nicobar Island region or in the biosphere reserve of the Great Nicobar region. So we have got the Great Nicobar Island, which is a biosphere reserve in India. And in this biosphere reserve, we have two national parks as well. I hope you guys are knowing we call them Campbell Bay. Campbell Bay National Park and the other one is Galathia National Park, right? So we have got two national parks and almost three to four uh, na uh, 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 wildlife sanctuaries. So Nicobar Island is already a very rich, you know, region in biodiversity and Nicobar pigeon is one of a unique biodiversity which is found in this region. So when you look at the Nicobar pigeon, Nicobar pigeon is mostly a blue green colored pigeon, but which has a slight tinge of white uh, feathers that basically are visible when the pigeon flies. Now there are a lot of interesting features about Nicobar pigeon. Let's talk about it as we move on to the next slide. So like I said, it is not just endemic to India. It is found across this region. So it is found across the Southeast Asian region, you know, starting from the Nicobar Islands of India and going all the way to the Solomon Islands and Palau. When you look at its other behavioral patterns, you will see that Nicobar pigeon is mostly an omnivorous animal. Omnivorous means it feeds on insects as well as plant seeds or grains, seeds and such. So it basically eats both insects and plants. It's a crepuscular animal. Crepuscular means it is active during morning and evening, dawn and dusk, right? So it is active during morning or the evening time. So if you ever get a chance to visit any of these national parks of Great Nicobar Island, if you ever go to the go to uh, go to see admire the beauty of the biosphere reserve of Great Nicobar Island, you can obviously go in the morning and evening. And if you're lucky, you may be able to see the Nicobar, the famous Nicobar pigeon. And when you look at its other characteristic, it is it 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 is a gastrolith organism. What exactly is gastrolith? Gastroliths are basically those organisms or basically these are this is a condition where organisms they put some rocks the organisms they you know they uh, intake some rocks and some tiny bits of stones which they keep in their gut which they keep in their stomach. Now this actually is a method of helping them in digesting food. So when a lot of animals I've talked about gastrolith character even in pangolins right so these animals what they do when they eat they in because they lack teeth they lack the arrangement to crush the food so what they normally do they are they put some rock they they intake some rocks and the rocks are located in their stomach which helps them to crush the food and so that it is easy to digest and eventually absorption of nutrients can also be done properly when you talk about ecological role of the Nicobar pigeon, the ecological role mostly involves, this is a common function for most birds that it helps in seed dispersal. So it helps in dispersal of seed, which eventually helps in the maintenance of the entire forest ecosystem. So a lot of birds, they play an important role in maintaining the entire forest ecosystem, especially with its characteristic of seed dispersal. And guys also remember when you talk about the droppings of the birds, the bird droppings, the bird droppings, it should be written, the, not the plant droppings, the bird droppings, bird droppings mostly are rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. All of you know, nitrogen and phosphorus, both of them are limiting factors, which play a very important role in growth of an organism. So nitrogen and phosphorus are essential nutrients which are found in the bird droppings, especially in the droppings of the Nicobar pigeon or in general, every pigeon. So it helps in the nutrient cycle of the nature of the natural ecosystem. So this is an important function that the Nicobar pigeon offers. Now, before we move on, let me announce guys, I have talked about this previously also on 5th of June, 
we are launching a full fledged course foundation course on the subject of environment and ecology and this is going to be a holistic course that i'm going to cover in 60 hours of extensive lectures from the basics of ecology and environment to the advanced level preparing you for the toughest possible exam that you know the country can offer that is the upsc civil service exams i am akshavrat i have an experience of almost 14 years of teaching i have taught in various famous institutions the last institution that I taught was Rao's IES and now we are launching this course with a full-fledged framework of delivering the best of the quality, best of the uh, you know study material available in the country, the best mentorship available in the country and in such an affordable price that it could be a game changer when you are preparing for civil service exams. We are launching this course on 5th of June and guys this would be something that can be very essential because if you start the course at the earliest, if you have the aspiration of qualifying civil services anytime in the future, then this is the right time to start. You'll have almost one year to prepare if you're preparing for 2026. And if you're preparing for even further, this is one topic which is very popular in the UPSC exams and also in the current affairs. So if you start this topic early, you can easily manage to learn almost all the current developments that happens in the subsequent year. So this would be a good opportunity to grab and we are launching it at a very affordable price. Do check out the link that we'll be putting it in the pinned comment. Now let's talk about the Nicobarak Pigeon further. Now the most interesting thing that, that, that fascinates all of us in Nicobar Pigeon is Nicobar Pigeon is considered to be the closest, the closest living relative to the famous dodo bird. If you remember, the dodo bird was an endemic bird to the Mauritius island and this bird, it is said that it got extinct in a matter of just 50 to 100 years, the moment when humans, they migrated or they, they, they discovered this island. This was a flightless bird and these are some of the, mini, some of the images and some of the, you know, um, you can say, recorded information of the dodo bird. So this is the dodo bird that you see on the top. This one is the dodo bird. And there is another bird which was also endemic to the Mauritius Island called the Rodrigues Solitaire. The Rodrigues Solitaire, this is the Rodrigues Solitaire. And these are the two birds whose current closest living relative is the Nicobar pigeon. Now, what is the interesting thing by knowing that this is a current closest relative? Guys, many of you must have recently heard that there has been a wolf called the dire wolf, which, has, which is believed to have got extinct almost 10,000 years back, has been reintroduced. Now, when it has been reintroduced, you know that it is not the real dire wolf. They have basically taken the, taken the DNA from the closest living wolf, but they have altered some of the DNA, take, which they have taken from the living from the DNA samples that they collected from the old fossilized skull. So basically, if dire wolf is possible for us to, you know, reintroduce, there is a possibility that Nicobar pigeons DNA and whatever DNA sample that we could collect of the dodo bird and the Rodriguez solitaire bird, we can create with the help of modern biotechnology, it may be possible for us to reintroduce the dodo bird. The dodo bird was considered to be the symbol. It is often considered as the symbol of con uh, species conserva con conser conservation. It's a, it, it, it's a popular, uh, you know, flagship species, but uh, sadly because of its extinction, it shows us that how, how you know, uh, sometimes our own actions as humans, we don't realize that it creates such a burden in the environment that many species such as the dodo bird, it got extinct in a matter of just 50 to 100 years, ever since the dodo bird was first, uh, you know, uh, discovered. So it shows that how we can now reverse, we call this phenomena as de-extinction, where we reverse the extinction by introducing its genetically modified or, uh, you know, a similar species from a similar closely relative from a similar closely related species. So Nicobar pigeon can be an essential species that can help in reintroducing our de-extinction of the dodo bird and the Rodriguez solitaire. When you talk about other details of the, of the, of the Nicobar pigeon, under IUCN, it is considered to be near threatened. That means its population decline is not yet very extreme. Its population decline is not more than 10%. 
it is still within 10 percent but it does not mean that it is not being threatened the at uh, the poaching activities and also the overall harm that is happening in the forest ecosystem it is now becoming a concern and that's why it is right now near threatened it is not a threatened species but if the conditions keeps go keeps prevailing in the same way then it may become a threatened species in future when you talk about its status in the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species CITES it is listed under Appendix 1 now Appendix 1 so try to understand this Appendix 1 is listed for those animals and plants which are considered to be endangered which are considered to be threatened and they need to be you know they need to be protected so you can understand CITES regard the Nicobar pigeon as a threatened species although international union for conservation of of nature still consider it as a near threatened species so you can understand the concern of the protection of Nicobar pigeon has already started rising when it comes to the wildlife protection amendment act of 2022 even the Nicobar pigeon has been put under schedule one you know there was a time when Nicobar pigeon was kept under vermin but now you can understand because it has also started to become a little threatened so it has been put under schedule one in part b part b basically talks about the birds so schedule one includes those animals which are given absolute protection and under the schedule one it has been listed under part b which includes the birds of the schedule one category so guys this much of information for nikuba pigeon should be enough i hope this information helped you guys so we'll be continuing with this series more videos are coming up stay tuned all the best